Oh, hello. I didn't hear you come in. Please sit down in one of these antique leather armchairs. I was just relaxing here in my study by the fire, listening to my fancy public domain music and smoking my Sherlock Holmes-style pipe. If this intro sounds a little bit classier than usual, it's probably because we just got back from the Kimball Art Museum here in Fort Worth. We had a chat in the beautiful Piano Pavilion Auditorium with Nancy Edwards, the curator of European art. We talked about the lure of Dresden, Belotto at the Court of Saxony, one of their latest exhibitions. We also talked about the history of the museum, what it's like being a curator, and the importance of water in Kimball's day-to-day operations. We discussed their upcoming exhibition, Monet, The Late Years, which opens on June 16th and features some of his amazing and massive water lily paintings. And let me tell you, if you thought I could go one whole episode without mentioning that I went to school for art, boy were you wrong. So this episode is stepping a little outside of our normal water discussion scope. We do talk a little about the beautiful water features at the Kimball, and there are a lot of them. Also, the current exhibition on Belotto has some really incredible depictions of water, and the upcoming Monet exhibit features water pretty heavily in his water lily painting, so there's still some water talk in this episode. The Kimball Museum has tons of events and programs that are always happening. You'll hear Nancy mention a really cool one connected to the upcoming Monet exhibition called Fiesta de la Familia, Light Color Monet, which is taking place on July 21st from 12 to 5 p.m. You can find out more about this event and all their other amazing events at kimball.org slash calendar. They also have a podcast called Art Minded, so be sure to check that out. All the paintings mentioned in this episode will be posted to our social media for you to see. Follow us on Facebook at Fort Worth Water and Fort Worth Agua, on Twitter at FW Water and at FW Agua, and Instagram at Save FW Water. A huge thanks to Nancy Edwards for taking the time to talk with us and to Madison Ladd for setting up the interview and making this happen. Now, let's get to the show. Am I speaking about right? That sounds good. From, yeah, from, that, from there. Mm-hmm, yeah. That sounds great. Okay. Um, I'm Nancy Edwards. I'm at the Kimbo Art Museum. I'm curator of European art. Can you describe what a day at the Kimbo Museum would be like without water? It's kind of hard to imagine, right? Yeah. Yeah, a, a day without water is hard to imagine. I mean, besides all the, the, the plumbing and those things that we take for granted, some of the most uh, beautiful features in the museum are the, the, the water, and particularly outside the mm-hmm. building. They're beautiful reflecting pools, and, and uh, if, if you're exiting the building... You don't. You're not aware of them initially. Uh, this you you don't hear the sound, but they have a waterfall effect, mm-hmm. and they fall into another pool. Uh, but if you're approaching the building, uh, if you come, we have two buildings at the Kimball: the Con Building, which was opened in 1972, famous worldwide. Many people consider it the finest or one of the finest museum buildings in the world. Mm. And uh, these reflecting pools were built for the entrance to the building. Mm. So as you would um, walk across the the grass um, and um, and onto platform, you you hear the sound of water. Mm -hmm. And then you walk through a grove of trees and hear the crunch of gravel. So you 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 have this kind of transition mm-hmm. into the museum building. It's it's really a wonderful thing. Yeah. Very peaceful, very yeah. calm. Yeah, absolutely. You can you tell us a little bit more about the fountains? Like were were they were they put in um, when the museum was built, or was it a later addition? They they were they were planned. So the building was carefully planned and landscaped. Uh, there's actually a third. Uh, pool water feature there's a sunken courtyard hmm. and uh there's there's also a pool of water uh there and uh, you know we're in texas so it is hot <laughs> yeah <laughs> and Absolutely. and and this 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 feature uh is is, is refreshing um mm-hmm. it, it, yeah. and it's it's a beautiful place the the, the the other the other thing to un- understand with uh the way so there are, it, it's symmetrical uh, there's a walkway as you approach the entrance to the museum, and on either side are these uh, are these basins, these these pools, mm-hmm. a higher pool with a waterfall. The water they're about um, 
uh, 100 uh, plus feet long, and then they drop about three feet into another pool. Mm -hmm. Um, and and uh, so people like to sit by them. Mm -hmm. um, there's this beautiful travertine stone, and then behind them, they're porticos, they're porches, basically mm -hmm. vaulted spaces with benches. Yeah. So you can uh, sit and relax. You can hear that sound. You hear the birds. Yeah. Um, and and uh, it's it's a very cooling effect. Yeah, it was it was very nice. I I was telling Madison that um, I came here with my six month old. And I had him strapped to my chest in one of those things, mm -hmm. and we were walking around, and um, you know, you get tired. Yeah. Uh, and so I sat out there uh, by the fountain for a while, and it's, it's very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was a it was a beautiful beautiful day. Yeah. That day. For our um, for our listeners, we're recording this in the piano auditorium, and it's beautiful. And so we'll post some pictures on our social media of uh, of the room. So it's been a while since I was in school. I went to school for art, um, and I took a few. Uh, art history classes, but I don't remember Bellotto, and I'm not familiar with him at all. Um, could you tell us a little about him and uh, and the current exhibition that you cur that you curated? Sure. Um, I'm I'm not surprised that you hadn't heard of him, but you probably heard of his uncle. Canaletto, mm -hmm. who is uh, one of the most famous view painters, um, he's Venetian, and um, Bellotto trained with his uncle and learned to paint in very similar style. Okay. So he's an 18th century artist. He's uh, really, I, I think we can say, uh, as as good as his uh, uncle. And there, yeah. there are many things about him that, that uh, you know, you might prefer a certain <laughs> painting to. Yeah. to. He, he did paint works of, I mean, Venice is a beautiful city. And so it's no surprise that a few paintings of Venice became very popular mm. in the 18th century. Uh, during that time, aristocrats from Britain and from uh, Germany and from all over would travel throughout Europe. They would take a year or two to uh, visit the important cities, and they liked souvenirs. So they would they visited Venice. It was a splendid, beautiful city yeah. in that time, and so they wanted to have um, pictures to to take back with them uh, as mementos mm -hmm. of that time. Uh, Canaletto's work is very descriptive, so it gives you an idea uh, of what that city lived like. But he was a great artist, so we don't think of it as just a photograph. It's more like, you know, a portrait that has, even though he painted it very meticulously and exactingly, uh, beautifully painted, uh, particularly with the use of, of light, mm. light and shade. Yeah. So... Um, Bellotto, uh, as a young man, he joined the workshop when he was, say, 13 or so, uh, learned how to paint in a very similar way, um, and uh, uh, then went out on his own. He traveled himself. Um, he got some important commissions, and he ended up, uh, uh, he was invited to the court of Dresden in Germany. Mm -hmm and uh, began his career uh, 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 there. He was, he was uh, recognized as being a great artist, highly rewarded, uh, paid a great salary, stayed there for quite a while. Yeah. Um, war broke out, and um, the, his patron, the king elector, died, and so he moved on. Mm. Um, and, and so he painted for these different courts, also in, in uh, Warsaw, uh, mm. in Vienna. And so his work, a lot of it's remained in uh, in Europe, okay. and so there are fewer paintings in in, in the States. And uh, uh, it's said he painted Venice, but he also painted um, Dresden mm -hmm. and Warsaw and Vienna and yeah. Munich and, and and so on. So not not as well known, but a mm -hmm. fantastic painter. And the exhibition here currently is just his Dresden paintings, right? Just Dresden and then Pirna, which mm. is um, a village outside about oh, okay. 20 kilometers uh, south. Beautiful place. Uh, and there you see the River Elva. Um, so it's, it's, it's on that important mm. trade route yeah. with uh, uh, the mountains. Yeah. And uh, uh, you see sort of a different part of that realm of Saxony. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, beautiful paintings. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot about 
uh, water conservation in our line of work. And I know the Kimball has an incredibly distinguished art conservation program. Uh, do you know of any ways that water is used in art conservation? For the most part, no. Water yeah. wouldn't be used. <laughs> uh, a, be... a solvent would be used, um, something that, that that would be very carefully formulated, but yeah. might have alcohol and other things. So so water in itself might be damaging water to, be bad to, to, to the work, right? Sure. <laughs> you know, even 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 spit, which has yeah. enzymes, is, <laughs> is, is 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 better to use. There might be some parts with objects, you know, that that a kind of distill just to take out uh, outer layers of grime, but you have yeah. to be really careful sure mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> I just had to shoehorn yeah shoehorn that in yeah. um I didn't think there would be um well can you tell us a little bit about what it's like to be a curator uh curator's wonderful job I'm, I'm I'm awfully lucky to to uh be a be a curator at the Kimball uh we do lots of different things, and every day is different. That's one yeah. of the things that makes the, the job a lot of, of, of fun. So foremost, we care for the collection that we have, and that means um, it, it's a uh, display in the galleries. We want people to come and enjoy the work. Sure. It's here for everyone. And so that might in, in, entail... Uh, you know how it's hung, how it's uh, lit. Also, uh, uh, we create things to uh, help people enjoy it. Meaning, uh, labels on the wall. Uh, uh, we have uh, audios. Uh, hmm. We translate those things into Spanish to make them uh, oh, ac accessible. You can find that on our uh, uh, if on. Our website, mm -hmm. uh, you you can find that copy there. We might produce some short um, uh, audios and videos and 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 so on. So we like to share that material. So it means um, writing writing those 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 things of uh, interpretation. Uh, we work with our programming uh, because we we realize people enjoy. Uh, artworks in many different ways yeah. uh, to so we we have lots of programs uh, uh, we have uh, lecture programs we have mm. workshops we have things for for uh, kids so uh, we encourage everyone to come yeah. out and and uh, um, uh, enjoy them for example for uh, Bloto we have um, some programs coming up we ha um, and we'll have a um, Family Festival, a Fiesta de la Familia. Um, the next one is July 21st, and that's going to be connected with our Monet uh, exhibition. Oh, cool. But well, another thing I was wondering is, if is do you get to travel around to a lot of other museums and, and visit them? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Curators do get to to travel. We get to travel when we're uh, researching exhibitions that we're mm. creating and that we're uh, making. Uh, so our uh, deputy director George Shackelford, who has worked for uh, several years and really it's a, a lifetime of of, of work. Yeah. He's an impressionist uh, expert. Uh, has traveled to view and study Monet paintings mm. all around the world and also to uh, ask for the loan of those 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 mm. works so uh, to um, make an exhibition you you have to work with other institutions mm -hmm. to um, see if you can secure those those loans uh, we also lend paintings from our collection and uh, uh, sometimes curators uh, accompany those artworks or mm. make sure that um, they're installed. Um, uh, overseeing sure. uh, curators work to oversee the installation of works that are on loan, yeah. and so that gives us an occasion to to travel. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I'm I'm doing that uh, soon. I'm going to. Uh, both Paris and to Basel in Switzerland oh, wow. to uh, uh, oversee some loans that we have yeah. on exhibitions um, in Europe. How far in advance do you plan an exhibition, like, say, for example, the, the Lure of Dresden? 
Uh, the Lure of Dresden was an exhibition. Uh, it's We have different types of exhibitions. So in this case, almost all of the works traveled from one institution from Dresden. Mm. Oh. And their uh, paintings gallery was undergoing some renovation. So that meant that things that are normally on their walls were available oh. to be shown. So we're really lucky yeah. uh, that we're able to have these works that are uh, rarely traveled travel mm. um, on view and uh, a, a number of them to see in uh, ideal circumstances so you can uh, you know really see them all together and see them up view so this one didn't uh, take so long to organize although they did produce a wonderful uh, catalog for the work mm. uh, now if we're organizing an exhibition either um, uh, the Kimball alone or with other institutions that can take uh, three plus years, mm. three, four, four years, yeah. um, because you, you, there's uh, there, you're you're going to have a period of study where you're examining, you're selecting uh, the artworks. You have to write the catalog. Mm. The catalogs may be printed uh, a year in advance. So there's uh, they they take a long time to oh. organize. Um, so we have a few adopted classes at Glen Park Elementary, and we do some things with them. We do some events, and we also do uh, a pen, pen pal letters back and forth. So the class will write us, and we'll write them back, and um, it's a lot of fun. And um, so we try to talk to them about different careers. And so if they're listening right now, and I hope they are, um, what would someone need to study and, or to go to school for to be a curator when they grow up? So big shout out to Glen Park. Yeah, come visit us sometime. Yeah, absolutely. See these, see these paintings. Yeah, um, we love. We have a lot of school groups. Uh, yeah, come. I saw so some if here. You can make today. it, and if not as a group, come with your family sometime. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Um, well, to 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 be a curator, um, you, you know, it it's it's often those basic things that go into whatever career you know you you, you might have yeah. so i would say learn to be a good writer is is one of the things mm. that, and, and to be a good writer you, you want to be a good reader so read whatever you can and yeah. and, and uh, uh we all do a lot of, of of writing and and it's one of the things i really enjoy i was an english major actually it's my undergraduate mm. uh, curators often and we have a lot of education, so uh, um, uh, a lot of us have PhDs, and and uh, along the way we learn languages as well. That's always something mm. that I would recommend. Um, yeah. uh, we use them. I, I read in in uh, French and Italian and and German. Mm. Uh, uh, almost every day, wow. <laughs> uh, uh, we do those those things. Now you don't necessarily need that, or you don't need it if you're curator of American art. But it's it's a lot of fun to have those languages. But more basically, I would say just uh, be curious, mm -hmm. ask a lot of questions, and be observant. Yeah, because that that that's what our job boils down yeah, to yeah. asking the right questions and then then uh pursuing those those questions yeah. and and answering them yeah that's great advice mm -hmm. <laughs> um uh, what first interested you about pursuing a career in art i think um there's something about actual um actual objects about artwork yeah. that 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 I think is so profound and moving and exciting I think most of us relate in a, a pretty wonderful way mm -hmm. with artwork yeah. so so the thought of being able to to uh, work with objects was exciting yeah. and and really realizing that they have so much value that artworks aren't something that you just I mean often we just look at them for a few seconds yeah. or a few minutes. They yeah. strike us immediately, and we're tempted to move on. Uh, I think the aha moment comes when we realize, hey, we can look at these for a <laughs> yeah. long yeah. time. Yeah. There's a lot of information. They're not easy things. They're not, you know, sometimes I think people think they're, they're, um, they're fluff. Yeah. But 
uh, like great li literature, there there um, there's a lot to them if you take the the time. Yeah. And and uh, art without uh, or life without art is like life without water. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It, it's it's our sustenance. Yeah. Nice uh, callback. <laughs> yeah. And there's I think there's something to be said for seeing seeing these in person. I mean, you can see them on the internet, you can see these artworks and books, but um, the Matisse painting that you guys have in your permanent collection, um, I'd seen it plenty of times before, but I'd never seen it in, in person. And when I saw it, I noticed, um, I looked at it really closely and I noticed that he had scratched uh, like an M at the near the top of the painting, um, I guess, writing his name or mm -hmm. something. And mm -hmm. I thought that's, that's just very cool. And yeah. you wouldn't be able to see that really um, on, in a picture on the internet or, um, so it's something very cool, um, sort of brings you closer to, to what you're seeing. Yeah, I, I agree. There, there, are, even if you, uh, what's wonderful now is that, uh, you can look at an image and zoom in and you can mm -hmm. get a lot of yeah. information, but the way that your body relates to it, the scale, mm. and you simply can't get yeah. what, what you talked about, the color, tactile things, being able to, to kind of take in some of those details that yeah. are so meaningful. There's, there's just nothing like seeing it and Seeing it in the context of other objects, we're lucky at the Kimball because we have a great, great building with great mm -hmm. light, yeah, absolutely. and it brings the paintings to to light. There's, yeah. there's, it brings the paintings to life. There's nothing like it. Yeah, that's very true. What you said about the scale. Um, these um, Bellotto paintings are pretty big, right? There, there are. They are. They're really big. They're uh, over eight feet wow. wide, over four tall yeah, wow. and Jeez. so th it, that has something to do with their impact they're mm -hmm. they're they're really um they're great composition so you take in this whole you'll take in this this view that he's given us this beautiful cityscape but one of the wonderful things about it is that they they're this portrait of the city so you see the whole thing and you sort of feel the time of day and the temperature you hmm. kind of feel the atmosphere the water yeah. most of them do show the water of the, yeah, yeah. the elbow but then he invites you to um uh, look, and you can as you get close, you see wonderful details of people and of objects, and yeah. the, the details are some of the most beautiful things. Yeah. And you can't see them even in these zooms quite mm. quite often the same way that you'll see them uh, in person. And it shows his skill as a painter. Um, a, a lot of the figures are just wonderful. So you get this idea of being in this city back in the 18th century. Yeah. So you see people, you see aristocrats, you see country people, you see the way that they're relaxing, mm. enjoying the end of the day. You see the king in his carriage, you see the <laughs> horsemen before them, and just yeah. these endless uh, details, the way the light falls on, you know, someone's white stocking. It's, yeah. it's great. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of the reflections that he puts in the water are the incredible reflections yeah. absolutely there's some of the the best parts of it and and uh, you might think that an artist like that and a lot of the the, the uh, view painters some of the venetian uh, view painters it becomes formula in a way yeah. but but not not with Bellotto. he's showing the buildings reflected and you uh you really enjoy that sense of yeah. what water is how it reacts whether it's still um, uh, the colors, yeah. the light, yeah. it's, it's great. So you have an exhibition of Monet's later works opening on July, June 16th. And um, it's going to feature 20 of his water lily paintings. Do you know what drew him to paint those water lilies so much? Or like, it, like his Japanese bridges, do you know why he would, do you know why he kept going back to that? Monet had a garden, Giverny, and uh, it was a work of art to himself. And he loved mm. he he in his his later years, uh, that became his 
great, great subject, and you can see how he was drawn to it. Uh, and he's he's such a, a hero in a way, or someone I think people are really going to enjoy this mm-hmm. this this uh, show so much yeah. because of the story it tells. The paintings are glorious, and talk about size and yeah. scale. They're humongous. Yeah, they They're are. really uh, large, so that uh, you immerse yourselves in them the same way he immersed himself uh, in his garden. Mm. And uh, the garden was uh, full of, of uh, she said the, the the water, the the ponds, and so there were water lilies yeah. growing, but also the vegetation, uh, willow trees, uh, mm-hmm. and and uh, there are paintings of his. The Kimball owns one of the willow trees, okay. whose uh, reflections are. Um, in the water and the water lilies itself, and sometimes um, the, the the trees and the growth uh, in these ponds, they all kind of kind of blend together. So you can't <laughs> tell what's what's yeah. reflected and and what's real. And uh, there are colors at different times of day. Mm-hmm. So this was a subject that was uh, uh, s- sort of profound in terms of of uh, how you are able to capture that uh, in paint, the color that things can take, but this subject that became kind of a metaphor for other things as as well. Hmm. Um, what's your favorite piece in the Kimball's permanent collection? That's that's like we often say. That's like a mother asking <laughs> to choose among her, her children. Sure. So it's 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 a hard one. I love the Caravaggio's card sharps. Mm. I, I have to say, it's just such um, a wonderful and rare painting that has a great narrative and is so freshly painted. It be it kind of launched Caravaggio's career. He's he's one of uh, he's probably the most celebrated. Uh, 17th century Baroque mm-hmm. Italian painter and uh, th- this painting had been uh, lost it was known for many copies it was uh, rediscovered um, um, in the 80s and mm-hmm. uh, its quality showed it to be not a copy but Caravaggio's own yeah. so it's you know it's showing these uh, this this young man who's um, uh, being drawn into a card game and mm-hmm. and and uh, 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 he's he's uh, uh, they're mark cards yeah. uh, and, and they're, they're they've they're about to pull you know uh, a, a card from behind uh, one of the cheats backs yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's 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 a lot of fun so so that's a great uh, uh, work uh, often we say the uh, the museum itself is is one of the greatest yeah. greatest works because uh, as I mentioned before it's a, it's a great great building yeah mm-hmm. um, well this question is probably going to be equally hard but um and i usually ask everyone uh if they had to pick a movie to live inside of what movie would that be but i wanted to ask you if you had to pick a painting to live inside of what painting would that be you know one of our latest acquisitions uh a painting by pierre bonard who uh painted uh he was inspired by the impressionist later generation um it the the painting's name is Landscape at Le Canet, and uh, Le Canet is near Cannes. It's in the French Riviera, the Côte d'Azur. Uh, beautiful, beautiful setting, yeah. and it's panoramic landscape. Mm. Uh, it's over nine feet. Oh wow! Uh, uh, long. Right now, it's on loan uh, oh, okay. to an exhibition of Pierre Bonnard's pa- uh, paintings. Mm. It's a big, important exhibition. So we felt in in London, we had to let it go. It will come back soon. Yeah. So come <laughs> back and and, yeah. and and see it uh, in in late uh, spring. But B- Bonnard is one of the best colorists of all time, and uh, uh, he painted this landscape near his villa where he lived and worked hmm. um, uh, as an ideal p- 
painting, uh, as hmm. as uh, and and it has almost all the colors of the rainbow, <laughs> uh, beautiful oranges and reds and and uh, uh, yellows. So it's this this brilliant, but also cool greens in the mountains uh, hmm. beyond. Yeah. So it's it's glorious. And there's there's uh, a, a figure in the foreground. There are animals in the foreground. The figures probably a stand-in for the artist him. Him, himself yeah. uh, so you can imagine yourself being there and it's a very uh, restful uh, beautiful glorious setting yeah I'd love to live in that yeah. painting. <laughs> that's a good answer yeah, great. Um, well great. thank you very much oh, for well, doing this you. and thank you I really yeah. enjoyed it and, it's beautiful and, yeah uh, yeah we're as I said I'm lucky I've got a lucky yeah lucky job <laughs>